Precious Father, we thank you for the past 21 days. We've been praying, we've been fasting, and we thank you because this morning, with hands lifted up to heaven, we thank you for answers. We thank you for answers. We thank you for the mercy of God that stepped in. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name we pray. Please, you may have your seat. Glory to God. Will you please turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 22? I want to run so that we can pray towards the end of the service. As you heard that today is a prayer and faith seminar. Something spectacular, spectacular is that next Sunday we have a special guest ministry in church. In the person of um, Pastor Kole Shoring, your praise the Lord. Can you put up the flyer if it's available? So we have a guest speaking in church. And October the 4th, Friday, we have a special, so that is a special Sunday service. He'll be speaking in all the services and... Um, yeah, it was speaking all the services. And um, on the 4th of October, we have a special gathering for men. And I'm hoping all the men would make our time to come. I hope the men's fly is also available. Um, yeah, thank you. So we have Colonel also speaking and with Gabriel Obeche, you know, and just sharing a lot like that. So all the men, we want to, this would really, really build you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're also hoping we can have something. We will, we will have something for the singles, um, especially for the singles, let's leave it that way, and for the married women. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 22, and I want, we're going to conclude our teaching on prayer today. Yes, we're going to conclude our teaching on prayer today. And next month, we're moving to our family series. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we're moving to our family series next month where we'll talk about singles, talk about married Talk about everything in between. Singles, married, and everything in between. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 22 in verse 3. Proverbs chapter 22 in verse 3. So the question today is this. Why do some people get into trouble? And, you know, why do some people get into trouble? I was having a conversation yesterday with someone... And um, the conclusion of that conversation was this. The marriage was going to end up in a divorce. Not because of anything both of them did. They were just, it was just a wrong choice. One of the in-laws told me, he said that if I'd known what I know now, there would be no reason I would allow my child to marry this person. And one of the questions you want to ask is this. Why sometimes, even myself, I would um, enter into certain investments or certain relationships and get into trouble. And you will ask yourself that, why did I get here? And the reason why is simple. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. There are some troubles you will enter. You can't escape it. And that's why the Bible says that with such trouble, God will make a way out. Yeah, it will make a way out. But there are some that it's unnecessary for you to enter. And what prayer does is that prayer helps you to anticipate evil. Let's read quickly here. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 3. A prudent man, and this is what he's saying, a man that has insight, foreseeth evil and hide himself. But the simple man passes on and are punished. One of the things prayer does is to help you anticipate. You will just anticipate that this will be issues. So let's read again. He says, a prudent man foreseeth evil. And this is the work of insight when it comes to prayer. You just know that this migration to South Africa is a big problem. You just know that this thing that looks so attractive about leaving where I'm walking and moving here, it seems so good, but it's going to be a big problem. And the reason why is that it's not even something you can put your hands on physically. He says, a prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself and the simple pass on and they are punished. So you wonder, how come this happened and he escaped, and I did not escape, because the prudent man foreseeth evil. 
in the place of prayer, the scheme of the enemy, may you not enter the trap of men. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because some people are close to you, not because of anything. They just want to set you up. And let me say something to you here. When someone betrays you once, note it. Forgive, oh, but closeness is not compulsory. The reason why is this. Most of them, few people actually made a mistake. But most of them, it was part of the plan. And the only reason why they're apologizing is that they have not gotten to the end of their goal. And be careful of friends that love you for what you have and who you are, not for your person. Hey, 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 hey. My brothers and said, You know the people that love you. And some people genuinely love you for what you have. Some people genuinely love you for who you are. And as long as you have what you have, they're your friends. As long as you are who you are, they're your friends. But when you take those things away, they abandon you. Many of you, your parents' friends, as soon as your parents died, what happened to them? They disappeared because they were never friends. True friends stick closer than a brother. Glory to God. So the Bible says this, very powerful. This is, what, this is why we pray. He says, a prudent man foreseeth evil. Paul said, Paul said in the book of Acts, they were going to travel. And Paul said, by the Holy Spirit, he said, I perceive that this journey will be dangerous. Ah, the, the captain said, what do you mean by this journey will be dangerous? I perceive this journey will be dangerous. It was a, not that he had God though. You know, it's one thing that God told me. It was just a perception that this deal will end in trouble. I had the brother in church, does business. He was going to go into a particular transaction and he came to see me. He said, I don't want to just be accountable. He said, this is what I want to do. And I told him, I said, you know what I think? I think this will get into trouble. He went to do it. He ended up in trouble about 250 million. Someone said, how did I know? Just perception. So the Bible says, and this one of print that prayer does, a prudent man foreseeth evil. And in the place of prayer, one of the things that happens when you're very prayerful, I don't know if it happens to you or me, to everyone. When I, especially when I'm fasting, my spiritual senses are very sharp. So it says, a prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but a simple man passes on. So the guy has, I, I mean, one of the stories I share when it comes to relationship, lovely story. This sister in church met another guy in another church. Guy is up and down everywhere close to the pastors and all of those kind of things. Everybody likes the guy. The guy began to ask the sister how to, has a nice job. The sister always, the lady wanted, always wanted to say yes. He said, well, every time I want to say yes, I'll feel a restraint. He said, you know, I told the person, and let me say something to you. If you want to date someone and you want to pray about it, stop talking to them while you're praying about it. The emotions will affect what you hear. Some dreams you had were not from God. It's your emotions in the day that came at night. Praise God. So she disconnected. Three months. Maybe three months or three weeks. I'm not sure what I can. She disconnected. And it's not all those people that say, I will pray about it and they wait forever. Because there's an abuse with girls in church. When you are asking them that, do you want to go? Say, I will pray about it. Six months, I will pray about it. One year, I will pray about it. Until they start dating somebody else, they are still praying about it. Sometimes, brothers, listen. The Christian way to say, I don't like you sometimes. Is that what? I will pray about it. The polite way ladies tell single guys, I will, I will pray about it. So when you hear, I will pray about you, 50% know that this person doesn't like me. Glory to God. So, you know, this, this lady actually liked this guy. I said, let me go and pray because I want to say yes, but I feel a restraint. I feel a pullback. Went to pray. And when he went to pray, God said, don't. She moved on. A year, three months, or six months after, I can't remember the date exactly, they discovered the guy was homosexual. The question is that if you are homosexual, 
Why not get rid of that before you come into this? Are you hearing me? So I'm just showing what prayer does. So when we say, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, because some of you were praying, I want to collect, I want to, no, 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 no. Prayer is more powerful. You can anticipate. You can anticipate. So prayer helps you anticipate evil. You will avoid a lot of errors and investment if you can run your decisions through God in prayer. You will avoid a lot of errors if you can run your decisions through God in prayer. Taking things for granted that you don't pray about it is the reason why a lot of people are grounded. Joshua, when he, when he took over from Moses, they went to a big country, conquered the army. They were going to go to one country called Ai. <laughs> The Bible says that, Joshua said, the country is so small, don't take all of the army, just take a group. That, that, that country, they beat them, they killed them. Joshua came back to God and said, God, what went wrong? And God told him that there was a man in the camp. What's his name again? What? He said, Achan. He said, Achan has touched the accosting. The question is that, why didn't he know before anybody died that Achan had touched the accosting? Because sometimes we take it for granted. You want to go into a partnership. The guy is very good. A business partnership. Why not go ahead and pray? And say, Lord, I want to go into partnership with this person. On this deal, guide me. You know, a couple, a couple, you guys are trying to make some decisions. You know, you guys are trying to make some decisions about your children's school, about all of those things. You keep telling yourself what your friends are doing. Your children's decision and destiny is not your friend's destiny. Let me say something to you, eh? And I'm saying so because you need to know how God leads you. I'm telling you. The, the, my parents never wanted me to become a pastor. But the biggest mistake they made that was in divine plan was I went to boarding school. It was in boarding school I saw people that changed my path. They changed my path totally. I met a guy called Peter. Peter was three or four years older than me. And Peter would pray at 13 years, four hours every day. I'd never seen that kind of thing before in my life. There were two Peters. There were... Ah, they, so, in the morning like this, in the boarding school, we would just wake up. Four! Tongue till seven. We take our bath off to class. We come back. School at two. From school like this, we go to chapel. 2.30. Gladagada. Four. We pray. This is the time table. And, you know, because it was a community of young people, it was just so normal. And that's how the path of my life changed. You know what I'm saying? So, a lot of people say, my child must go to this. They must go to this. If me, it worked out well. But that's how some people, their child will lose everything they taught them at home because they were not in plan. You cannot afford to copy because our destinies are very different. Someone say hallelujah. So the first thing you must understand is that, number one, and I'm saying it to you because sometimes, sometimes, what? Well, Let's leave it that way. So the first thing about prayer is that number one, prayer helps you anticipate evil. And that's why a lot of times when we pray, we pray about the future. And we pray about the future because we're really asking, sometimes we're just asking, so that by the time we get there, we can just make good decisions. The second thing about prayer is this, that prayer brings about insights and revelations. Prayer brings about insights and revelation. Daniel chapter 2, or let's read Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2, then read Daniel chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 25, in verse 2. See what the Bible says. It says, it is the glory of God to what? To conceal a thing. Conceal means to cover it. But it is the honor of the kings to what? To search it out. We are the kings. When things are covered, we are the ones that have the privilege and right to open it up. He it says, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing. So, everything, so, but it is the honor of the king to what? To reveal it. So, let's look at Daniel chapter 2 verse 10. Daniel chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible says, And the Chaldeans answered before the Lord and said, There's not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter, that can show the king, that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there's no king, ruler, lord, that acts such of any magician or astrologer or chardian. Verse 11. He says, and this is a rare thing that the king required. And there's none that can show it before the king except the gods. 
whose dwelling is not with the is not with the flesh. Verse 12. We're going up to verse 19. For this cause the king was angry and was very furious. And he commanded them to dream to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. The wise men means the magicians, the dreamers, the interpreters. That was the category they placed. That was the category they placed, what they called it Daniel. So you know, Daniel was a prophet. This is very powerful. Daniel was a prophet, but in Babylon, they could not understand prophetic gifts. So they put him amongst magicians. When you have inside as a prophet, they put you amongst strategists. Because in the office, there's no place called prophet. In the office, the prophetic gift work as strategy. The ability to see, understand, comprehend, and discern. Glory to God. The Bible says this. And what was the background of the story here? The king had had a dream, and the dream was, was, had left him. So he called, them, he called the wise men and said, tell me the dream and tell me the interpretation. And the wise men said, excuse me, sir. Tell us the dream. You have forgotten. How will we not tell you interpretation? The Bible says this. <laughs> so they said they were, the king was so angry, he said they should kill all of them. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Verse 14. And Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arichot, the, cap, the, king, the captain of the king's guards, which had gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. Verse 15. And he answered and said unto him, Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known unto Daniel. Verse 16. And Daniel went in and desired of the king that he will give him time and he will show the king the interpretation. Verse 17. And Daniel went to his house and made the state known. And near Misha, that's um, Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego. These are the Yushan Neil. And near Misha and Azariah, his companions. Verse 18. The Bible says that he would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secrets. And Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of of the wise men of Babylon, verse 19. The Bible says, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. What am I saying to you? Prayer brings insight. That's what I'm saying. Prayer brings insight. Glory to God. Prayer brings insight. Prayer brings insight. I want to close. I've told you about how prayer brings insight. So prayer brings, number one, it helps you anticipate evil. Number two, prayer brings you insight. So sometimes in life, there's a knowledge gap. It's not as if something is wrong. It's just a gap. So I, I give an example. So for example, there's a problem in your marriage and you've tried everything, but the truth is that there's a knowledge gap. And... Um, let me give you a story that can help. A lady, a man brought his wife and they had a conversation how the lady was always running away from sex, you know, with the husband. So I began to talk to them and I told the man, just step up for me, let me talk to your wife alone. Just because of the things I know, I said, were you raped? She broke down and started crying. He said, I never told anybody. I said, why didn't you tell your husband? And I said to her, he said, that when your husband wants to sleep with you, you remember it triggers it. He said, that's the problem. He said, when my husband wants to touch me, I just freeze. Because for me, it's not pleasure. It's a reminder of the fact that someone took advantage of me. Oh, wow. What I'm saying this is that the husband is fighting her, thinking that she's doing something. The husband does not realize that she herself is a victim of her own problems. Sometimes there is a gap when it comes to business, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to life. In prayer, prayer reveals to us insight that will fill that gap. A lady in our church was testifying that she was trying to have a child and she couldn't have a child. One day in prayer, and this is very powerful, as she began to pray, God told her, change your diet. Within three months of changing her diet, she got pregnant. Now she has two children. Listen to me. There are certain dimensions of truth that would only come to you because God has opened your eyes of understanding. And the truth is this. Praying men see it beyond the natural. And praying men see. See, people that don't pray, don't see. People that pray, see. And this is where I want to close. Maybe two more things before I close actually. Praise God. When you have 
done everything in prayer and there's no result, do this one. When you have done everything in prayer and there's no result, do this one. There is a prayer I want to introduce you called the prayer of inquiry. I will use the scriptures to help you. Yeah. Psalm 77 verse 6. Psalm 77 verse 6. Yeah. And 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. He says, I call on to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart. Let's read the next line. And my spirit made what? Diligent search. He says, my spirit becomes Google. It's looking for answers. It says, my spirit did, did the search. And this is what I'm saying. When you're prayed and prayed and prayed, maybe you're trying to get pregnant. You're prayed and prayed and prayed and the approval is still pending. What you now begin to do is that, this is how you do, the next thing you do is that you stop praying. The reason why is that, if the prayer is working, then why is it not working? So stop. The Bible says that if the accent is done, wisdom is profited to what direct. Take a step and leave the prayer. You're still, it's still there and start going back to God in prayer and say, open my eyes to know how to pray about this issue. Show me how I should pray. That prayer is called the prayer of inquiry. That prayer is called what? The prayer of inquiry. It's a prayer where you are searching that what do I need to know? What do I need to hear? It's a prayer of inquiry. See what it says. He says, and my spirit began to make a search. And I'll give you, I will tell you how this works. They're praying, praying, praying. Practical story. A lady wanted to get a job. And she was praying about it. And praying about it. And praying about it. The HR director, God will give me a favor. Bam, 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 bam. She didn't get a job. And she felt God disappointed her. And she heard a teaching like this. She went back to God in prayer. And said, but I desire this job. And God said, you were praying the wrong way. You were praying that you, I will give you favor with the HR director. But the MD of the company and the CEO has a candidate. He said, so all the time you were praying, the HR director, you had favor with her. But she was incapacitated because a higher authority was involved. He said, what you should pray is this, that from the MD and the person he has in mind, there should be divine interruption in the process that will create a gap for you. He said, thank you, Jesus. She went to prayer. As she went to prayer, the person the MD preferred got a better offer another company, moved. The vacancy became open. The CEO told the, MD, the HR director, choose anyone that is best for the candidate. She came in. If she did not have that insight, that's what the Bible called praying amiss. You will keep praying and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want your husband. Meanwhile, it's something about you that cannot keep them. And God will keep sending them. And three months, they will break up. Six months, they will break up. Nine months, they will break up. You wonder what's going on. It's something about you. You are praying, Father, give me more money. And it's not more money you need. What you need is financial intelligence and wisdom to manage what you have. And what the prayer of inquiry does is this. I've been praying and praying and praying about this. But I'm now inquiring from heaven. Show me exactly how to pray on this matter. See what it says. He says, my spirit made diligent search. This thing is powerful. Though. In the prayer of inquiry, let me, tell you, let me tell you how it works. Number one, in the prayer of inquiry, you must start with some principles. Number one, this is the first principle. God, I know you answer prayers. And that's why I'm coming to you. Because it's your desire for me to have this prayer. So it starts with a conviction. The first thing is that the will of God is that, Lord, I know this is what it is. So you can't go to the prayer of inquiry and say, God, if you want, if you want, mm -mm, it doesn't work that way. It works with that conviction that, Lord, you answer prayer. The second thing, so that you answer prayer, you found in the scriptures. The second thing is this. You are not asking that, Lord, you are not asking for things. In the prayer of inquiry, you are asking for wisdom. James, let's look at James because I wanted to get this thing. James chapter 1. Chapter, chapter 1 verse 2. Are you there? 
I will read, I will, there's something, we're going to read verse 5, but I want to read it in context. Chapter 2. It says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Temptation there is not like sexual sin. The, you know, the word temptation, they can mean tough times. It says, when you fall into tough times, it says, count it all joy. Verse 3, verse 3. It says, why? It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. Continue. He says, and let patience have a thought of work, that you may be perfect, entire, what thing, what thing. He said, when you fall into tough times, this you procedure. Look at verse 5. And if any man lack wisdom, why is he saying this? He's saying that when that trouble has stayed a long time, you have learned patience, you have learned everything, but the trouble is still there. Then you will now go to God in prayer and say, Lord, I have stayed in this house for a long time. If any man lacks wisdom on how to deal with that tough time, so when he was saying, if any man lack wisdom, not that I need this wisdom for relationship. No, sir. It's wisdom to deal with tough times. He says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. The wisdom in context was talking about wisdom to deal with tough times. And that's the prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry is a prayer that says, Lord, how will I deal with this? Glory to God. I said glory to God. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Is that what I quoted to you earlier? Yeah. 1 Please, let's. The Bible says of which salvation the, pro the prophet did what? Did what? The prophet, listen to me. The prophet knew something was coming, but he didn't have clarity. Lima kaita pratiata asioko ria ne katilani zili takwati minanga Perigoto gloska, ezazikite litora ilango pra, esoratea, kiani pakuati, zagandu katia, legede. You know, you are, you are, you are, you are inquiring with the spirit should i go or not kalita mantekaya is this my part or not nika pale is this my project or not ramaku they were inquiring praise god lord why is it hard for us to get pregnant lord why is the one million 1.5 million dollars fund is so hard for us lord why is marriage so hard i've been praying Show me, Lord. And the Lord will show you. You got it? Yes, Don't forget it. Praise God. There's a folk message I have on Paramount Inquiry. I think I talked about one hour on it. It's on YouTube. Go back and listen to it. Lastly, every time you pray, Every time you pray about something and you are afraid that what you have prayed about would not happen or what you have prayed against will happen, that shows you that you need more meditation. You hear what I said? I don't know if I've experienced this before. You pray, 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 but you, are, you know that. You, you, the reason why is that the way prayer works, when you have answers in prayer, peace fills your heart. Let me tell you something. This is how you know. This is how you know. One of the ways you know you have answered prayers. Once you're finished praying, nothing changes in the physical, but there's a peace. There's an assurance that fills your heart. That's one of the ways you know that this is a done deal. And this is how it works. Most of the time when we enter prayer, we're carrying burdens. And the way you know that the prayer has answered is that it's almost as if you take the burden and put it on the altar. You just become lighter. Nothing has changed the physical, but there's an assurance from heaven that this is done. When you now pray, and this is very important, every time you pray and after the prayer, you still feel the very fear you feel. There's need for meditation. You know why? Because meditation takes fear away. And if you still feel the fear you pray, the fear will paralyze your prayer because whatever is prayed out of fear does not work. Prayer works by faith. So what you should do is that you go back and say, hey, I've been praying. So, I know you are, I understand that. But you are still afraid. You go back to what? You need meditation. And meditation on the word of God until you, until you meditate and find revelation. And what is meditation revelation? Psalm 62 verse 11. He says, once I've not spoken, what happens? Twice have I heard the voice. That what? 
The first time you heard the voice, it was information. The second time you heard the voice, it was revelation. What changed information to revelation is meditation. Oh, wow. The, it says, once have thou spoken, he said, twice have I heard. God did not speak twice. He said, twice have I heard. The first time you heard, it was information. But as you meditated, because the first time you heard, you heard here. As you meditated, you heard here. He said, twice have I heard that the power belongs to God. So what turns information to revelation is what? Meditation. What's meditation? You confess it. You meditate. You say it. You say it. I'm saying so to you because a lot of you, the reason why you don't have us at prayer is this. You've prayed, but deep down in your heart, there's that fear. And what you need now is what? Meditation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed today? Yes, I feel that this is a very instructive message for a lot of people. Are you here? Yes. Stand up, let us pray. We have some minutes to pray. Praise God. During this fasting, the Lord gave us four, four blessings. Four blessings. I want to read it to you. Hallelujah. If you have a friend or your wife here, you grab their hands and pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Four blessings. I tend to write everything down. Number one, the blessing of acceleration. Number two, the blessing, the blessing of acceleration. Genesis 27 verse 20. Can you hover the screen quickly? Genesis 27 verse 20. Genesis 27 verse 20. It says, and Isaac said, how did you find the game so quickly? And he said, well, this amplified, this is not King James, but leave it for the now. And Isaac said, how is it that you found this so quickly? How is it that you got the contract so quickly? How is it that it happened so quickly? He said, because the Lord your God brought it to me. So, it didn't take me time. It's a blessing of acceleration. Give me the, get, look, look at King James. And after King James, you go to NLT your message. And Isaac said to his son, how is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, the Lord thy God brought it to me. Change the translation for me. Why he said the Lord cleared the road for me. That's what I'm looking for now. Message, 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 message. Hold on, hold on. Look at this one. NLT. How did he find it so quickly? He said, God, what I was looking for, you put it in my path. Yeah. Are you getting something? He says, you, you will be looking everywhere. He said, I will take it. You, you will just hit your leg. Pa! That's what you're looking for. Put it in my path, oh God. Kabashataya. Anate. If I'm not ready to pray, you can go home. Uh, if I'm not ready to pray, you can disconnect online and go and be cooking. Put it in my path. Give me the message translation. When I say pray, not that you will form like a kind of prayer. You will pray, oh. Not that you will be saying, I, mean, I have, uh, what do they call it? Mustache, I'm a steez man. There's no steez again, no. Real steez, real men of steez pray, oh. See what it says. And Isaac said, so soon, how did you get it quickly? This is a blessing of what? Acceleration. Some things must happen before it's December 31st. He said, some things must happen before what? It's December 31st. He says, so soon. How did he get it so soon? He said, because your God cleared the path for me. Ah, only my projects cleared the path. Everybody lift up your voice. Let's go ahead and pray. If your wife or husband is here, join us with them and pray. Let go put Drop it on my part, oh God. I need the regular drummer to drum now. Yes. Second, I'm a total robot called a Matia. The blessing of acceleration. The blessing of acceleration. I receive the blessing of acceleration. Drop in my part. Drop in my part. Drop in my part, oh God. And Tikopotamana. Drop in my part. 
partake the blessing of acceleration and talk a lot of concerning pregnancy and childbirth drop in my part Likuri Masai Toka Patiko Bobo Botomana Selet and the Guri Matahe Ekan Lusketele Monokatia Ekan the Tolia Takatia Ekan the Tolia Takatia Lekotalia Paliato Seliku Panemon Telegatia Seliku Ramataya Ekoria Tapa Sapale Kataya Selo Kotone Mate Silo Korati Sepora Naya Mantalabia in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My God. All of you watching online, you should be standing on your feet, not on your bed. He says, when you fast, my father that sees in secret will reward you openly. From this fast, receive open rewards. Amen. Let the evidence that God answer prayer saturate your life. Amen. Everything you are looking for, let your path be clear. Amen. Angels clear the path. On your finance, clear the path. Your approvals clear the path. On your contracts, clear the path. On partnership, clear the path. On marriage, clear the path. On promotion, clear the path. Saga Chuka, Paketo Poroke Manante, in the name of Jesus. Somebody declare, my path has cleared. From this hour, nothing will slow you down again. Why you were not getting results, get results there. Why others did not get shot, get results there. In the name of the Lord Jesus, all of you that are projects, all of you that start businesses, on your business path, let the path be cleared. In the name of Jesus, Amen. every pending contract, in the name of Jesus, we release it. All of you in paid employment, on your paid employment, receive that miracle job. Receive that promotion. Every outstanding approval, hear the word of the Lord. I say, come speedily. In the name of Jesus. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 15. I said there are four blessings, so we'll do two in this service and the rest. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 15. Hallelujah. And he made, watch what the Bible says. It was a businessman that showed me this this this. I read this in NLP, so one businessman came to see me with a testimony. And he said, Pastor, there was even one part I noticed in the verse you quoted. He said, and he made in Jerusalem, he said the king made in Jerusalem, engines, invented by what? Then who made it? God sent him men that worked and he got the result. He says he made in Jerusalem engines, invented by corny men to be on towers, on bulwarks, to shoot arrow, great stones without, and his name was spread about, for it was marvelously held until it was what very strong. And ah. in your industry, you'll be strong. He said it was very strong. I said in your field, you'll be very strong. In your city, you'll be very strong. Amen. I say your marriage will be very strong. Amen. I say your health will be very strong. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
whatever makes people pity you, the power of God dismantles in this morning. The Bible says this. It was strong because it was what? Marvelously here. It's the blessing of assistance. The blessing of what? Assistance. Everywhere help. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Everywhere help. Everywhere help. help. You're going to an office help. help. In transaction help. help. Your city help. help. Everywhere you turn help. help. Lift up your hands and receive it in prayer. 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 Gatoka potoka potara. Ligo poronde katata. Shade getura. Erepe toke bayaya. My God. Everywhere, Lord. Aha. Pote kaba. Pote kaba. Pote kaba. Pote kaba. Pote kaba. Pote kaba. Pate kemota. Pate kemota. Pate kemota. Pate kemota. Parabataba. Paranda kote. Silobonote. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we round up this fasting, receive the blessing of assistance. Amen. Everywhere you turn, help will arise for you. Amen. I said, everywhere you go, help will arise for you. Amen. Human help will arise. Amen. Financial help will arise. Amen. Legal help will arise. Amen. Approval help will arise. Monetary help will arise. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When you have no control, let help arise for you. Amen. When you know nobody, let help arise Amen. for you. From today, you will never be denied again. Amen. From today, you will never be cheated again. Amen. Receive help. Amen. Over your life, yes. receive help. Amen. I say over your children, yes. receive help. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The rest of this month, receive help. Amen. The rest of this year, receive help. Amen. All of you that own businesses, stores, receive help. Amen. All of you paid employment, receive help. Amen. Whatever city you enter, receive help. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Concerning marriage, receive help. Amen. Concerning fund, receive help. Amen. In your approval, receive help. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Someone shout, I've received help. Say grace, say grace, say grace. This is my story. From today, you have become very strong. I said you have become very strong. You have become very strong. Lift up your hands and thank you for answer prayers. All the things you wrote for your prayers, go ahead and thank you for all of them. Take them one by one and thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Marvelously help. The blessing of acceleration and assistance. We'll receive it. Amen. God bless you. You can have your sins.